Coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your second algorithm made easy tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be learning the most basic of sorting algorithms and that is the bubble sort algorithm and so I've just been I've drawn up this sort of visual example to show you visually how it works and then we're going to be applying it to code so for those visual learners out there this will be beneficial to you and if you just want to see the code then you can always skip ahead so what the bubble sort does is that it checks the it checks two elements um, cross examines them together or checks for value to see if it's greater than one or less than one uh, than the other value and then it swaps them if it needs to so in this case we want to sort it from least to greatest and so it checks the first two then checks the second checks the third then goes back to the beginning does the same thing over and over again until it's done so uh, how is this going to work? So we're going to say, okay, it's going to check these two values. We want to do from least to greatest. So we're going to say, okay, is 10 greater than 4? Yes, 10 is greater than 4. So this iteration of the loop, we're going to say, we're going to have 4. Sorry, I'm not the greatest at writing on my band blue tablet. And 5. And let me change the color here. So we have 4, 10, uh, 11, and 5. And so now it checks the next two elements. So it says, okay, is 10 greater than 11? No, 10 is not greater than 11, so it's going to remain the same. So we're going to have 4, 10, 11, and 5. And so now it's going to check the last two elements. So it's going to say, okay, is 11 greater than 5? And so uh, it, that is true. So we're going to swap those values. So we're going to have 10, 5, and 11. So now that that's done, okay, we reached the end. So now we got to go and check for the beginning again. So we're going to check the beginning and we're going to say, okay, is 4 greater than 10? No, it's not. Okay, so th don't swap any values. So everything remains the same. And so we check the next two values, and it says, okay, is uh, is 10 greater than 5? Yes, it is. So we're going to say, we're going to swap those values. And voila, our array is sorted. So our in our code, it will still check to see if this is true, and it will continue to check, and so on and so forth. But... As you can see, our array is fully so sorted, so um, that's exactly how it's going to work. So we're going to apply this into our C++ code, and you can still apply this to whatever language uh, you are using. So I already, so I already have some code set up. So I have, um, I have this basically just says, sets a C time for a random number. Uh, that's basically just for C++. We create. Uh, we create a temporary and and this you know yeah we're just gonna put 10 values and so I said that we're gonna randomly generate uh, 10 values between negative 100 and positive 99 uh, and yeah that's exactly how it's gonna work and so I created a print array function which calls another for loop which is going to print the array that we've done and then we're going to start a new line so that's basically what's gonna happen so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a bubble sort uh, function or method if you're using object oriented language. So we're going to call this bubble sort. And uh, we're going to pass in the array. So we'll just say our temporary there or you can just pass as a pointer, uh, which I expect you know. And we're going to take uh, we're going to take the size of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through these uh, while i is less than the size of it, and then we're going to make another less nested loop, which is going to loop with the size minus one, and we're going to increment that by one. So we're just having we're going to loop through the whole. This one's going to be looping through the whole array, 
and this one is going to be looping through the whole array minus uh, minus the size by one and so what we're gonna do is simple we're going to do what we stated in this diagram so what we're gonna do is we're gonna check these uh, check the values and check if the first value is greater than the second value so we're gonna say okay if temporary j is greater than temporary j plus one then we want to do something so do we get that so right now we're saying okay i is equal to zero and j is equal to zero okay so we're saying okay if temporary j is greater than temporary j plus one so let's go back and right here again so j is equal to zero this one right here we're saying if this one is greater than temporary one which is four so if it's greater than it then we want to swap these values so what we're going to do is just store temporary variable and we're just going to store the temporary j so then we're going to set to swap these, va these values we're going to say temporary j plus one is equal to temporary j or sorry temporary sorry it should be temporary j sorry is equal to temporary j plus one and temporary j plus one is equal to temp and so what this is saying is that whatever the value of in here so let's just take this for example so we're going to be storing 10 in this variable then we're going to take this value that was we're going to take whatever was in 10 and we're going to store 4 in there so we're just taking sorry so we're taking what, what was in here the second value and storing it in the first value so we're going to store 4 in there and then whatever was in the second index we're going to store 10 in there so all we're doing is swapping them and so what's going to happen j is going to increment by 1 so the size of this array if we're talking about this array right here the size of it is 4 so is 1 less than than 4 minus 1 so is 1 less than 3 yes it is so we're going to say okay is temporary 1 greater than temporary 2 so is this greater than this uh, or sorry is this greater than this and no it's not so nothing's going to happen so we're going to increment by 1 so we're going to say is temporary 2 greater than temporary 3 so is this greater than this yes it is true okay let's swap these values so we get this value right here and so we increment by 1 again we check and we say oh uh, our j is equal to 3 which is equal to the size minus 1 so this ends up finishing and so we go again and then we increment this by one and so we keep on doing it again until we've cycled through the entire array and then we are actually done so even if it sorts it at a certain point early on it doesn't really matter it's still going to cycle through the entire uh in the entire array to process everything and so what we're going to do is we're going to just going to call bubble sort we're going to pass in our temporary and the size of our array is uh, 10 and then we're just going to print it and like so. So what I'm going to do is run this application and so as we can see this is our randomly generated array right here so it randomly generates um, some numbers and so it generates it from least to greatest so negative 95, negative 91 all the way up to the greatest value. So let's say you want to store it from, from greatest to least well all you have to do is just switch this value right here and sorry and as you can see it stores it from greatest to least so 88 blah 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 so all it's doing is saying okay so if the this one is less than this then we want to uh, swap it so then we come here we check these two uh, is this less than this yes it is okay swap it so we swap this there is this less than that and so on and so forth and then we get uh, greatest to least so that's exactly how it works now before we actually end this tutorial uh, the bubble sort is really a bad way to sort and why is this a bad way to sort well we're looping through this array twice we're looping through it here uh, through the whole array in this and then with this one we're looping through the size minus one and so if we use our big O notation based on big O notation this is the big O of n 
uh, square. Because we're traversing, as we've seen in the previous tutorial, when we were doing that linear search, we were traversing through it one time, and so basically if it took, takes one time to actually check for one element or do an operation on one element in the array, then uh, if we have 10 elements, it would take approximately 10 seconds. For this one, we're traversing through it, the whole array, and then this one we're traversing through approximately the whole array. So therefore, we say that it's the big O of n squared because it will approximately take, since we're performing a linear search twice for this algorithm, it will, it will approximately take n squared the amount of times uh, for it to actually perform an operation. So for example, if we have 10 elements in this array, 10 to the power of 2 is equal to 100. So if it took one second to do an operation of e in each index of an array, it would take 100 seconds to do, uh, to do 10 different elements. Whereas if it was, um, say we had five elements or whatever, uh, then it would take approximately 25 seconds if it took one second on each element of the um, index of the array. So this is why this is you do not want this to happen. So you do not want it. You don't ever want your algorithm to be um, big O of n n squared or big O of n cubed or anything like that. Once you've gotten it like that, you know that it is a not very not a very efficient algorithm and you should try to find a more efficient algorithm is there some cases when there are some cases when big o of n uh squared is more beneficial than big o than say a big o of just n or a big o or whatever in certain situations and we'll look at that when we can see sort of the average case and the best case scenario and so on and so forth but anyways, that's it for the bubble sort. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I didn't really confuse you guys too much. But we'll learn more about all these things uh, in future tutorials. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. Don't forget to like my page on Facebook and follow on Twitter. And that's and to like, uh, sorry, sign up on my website. So that's it and bye for now.